in 2024, what if opposing defenses decide to put all their eggs in the stopping Luther Burden basket? Will that bog down the Missouri offense? I don't think it will, and I'm going to explain why coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters. I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso, and a man who will never forget Reed Nico stuffing Anthony Edwards at the rim. Is that guy the best American basketball player going right now, by the way? And speaking of American basketball, I've complained about the development happening in this country right now, or the lack thereof, much more specifically. Well, it's not just American basketball players. I think we've got a real quarterback development problem, too. I want to explain what I mean coming up on the podcast and why, speaking of quarterbacks, Matt Zollers, I don't think, is actually getting enough hype from Missouri fans. But you know what, before we start the program, just quickly here, I want to remind you today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And of course, I want to get started on the program talking about Luther Burden. And I've had a lot of people talking about what if defenses concentrate on stopping Burden? Is that going to work? Well, quite simply, I really doubt that it will. And and here's another thing. First of all, this idea of, well, they're just going to double team Luther Burden and then he'll, he won't be able to get the the football. First of all, Kirby Moore and a lot of offensive coordinators these days, but especially Kirby Moore is smart enough to get the ball into Burden's hand in space with little swing passes, jet sweeps, of course, screen passes, all that kind of good stuff. So the idea that he's going to be completely taken out of the game is a little bit ridiculous. But having said that, there is no doubt that defenses will be making a concerted effort to at least slow burden down this year. But even if a defense truly makes its main goal, its absolute number one priority is we're just not going to let Luther Burden touch the football, well, then those other Missouri wide receivers are absolutely going to eat. And Theo Weiss in particular, just that's the obvious one immediately. He's going to dominate more often than not one-on-one coverage against most teams' number two defensive back, even in the Southeastern Conference. I promise you that's true. Now, that's not even talking about the rest of the Missouri offense. Then you've got Mookie Cooper coming back, of course, and Speedy Johnson. Those are your three and four potentially, not even bringing up Makai Miller and a bunch of other talented Missouri receivers. But just think about Mookie Cooper and Speedy Johnson for a moment. Well, Speedy, hey, the name's right there, right? I, if you're an everyday or you've heard me hype up this young man a lot, he was obviously tremendously productive last season. I, I Once again, I just think with an entire off season under his belt, you saw it a little bit at the black and gold spring game. He's just going to have a whole different route tree, different types of action that he can run, which is going to make him an even harder person for the defenses to cover. And my whole point here is if you've got Mookie Cooper, a former five-star recruit, a speedster in his own right, maybe he never lived up to the absolute number one type receiver billing. But again, just like last season, we saw this. If he's your number three and you've got Mookie Cooper and Dominique Speedy Johnson matched up against a nickel player, your number three corner, a safety or a linebacker, God forbid, Good luck. I wish you a lot of luck in those particular matchups because these Missouri receivers are nothing to mess around with whatsoever. And by the way, did you notice I haven't even brought up the running game at this point? Because if these defenses do decide to match up with with Speedy Johnson 
and Mookie Cooper. Maybe play a dime defense. Well, again, I wish you a lot of luck against that Missouri running game like Armand Mimbu and Caden Green and, and all the young fellas up front. Again, not only did I not mention the running game here in that discussion, didn't mention the play-action game, or even Brett Norfleet, the Missouri tight end, who I think is really primed potentially for a breakout season this year in 2024. And, and obviously, Burden, who is already getting hype as one of the top 10 picks of next year's NFL draft, a guy I think is a sort of under-the-radar Heisman pick over at FanDuel, it's just – He's certainly going to be a point of emphasis by defenses. No question about that. But it's certainly not as simple as say, well, hey, take away Luther Burden, and then you're going to stop Missouri's 2024 defense or offense, excuse me. I just don't see that whatsoever. And of course, one final element of the Missouri offense that I did not bring up, of course, is quarterback. Brady Cook, and with all of his experience that he has now, I think you'll see you'll see him take an even you'll take you'll see him take another step forward with his play and development next season. I, I really believe that, and you're already starting to hear whispers that yeah, Brady looks improved already during this off season. I'm starting to see a lot of national pundits start to realize that hey, you know what, this Brady Cook could actually be an NFL prospect for this coming season with another nice season at Missouri. Well, I would just say, hey, welcome to the party. If you're an everyday listener, viewer of this program, you'll know I've been saying that particular take for a while. And also, if you're an everyday, you'll know I'm a big fan of Pennsylvania State quarterback Matt Zollers, who was the first recruit of the 2025 class, the first commitment of the 2025 class, for Missouri, and, and frankly, I don't think this quarterback is getting enough hype by Missouri fans, believe it or not. And perhaps perhaps Tiger fans are a little bit jaded when it comes to the highly ranked quarterbacks. Tyler Macon, obviously, from East St. Louis, didn't quite work out. Jabari Johnson has already transferred. The former four-star player has transferred back to the West Coast, playing at Oregon State now. And obviously, Sam Horn has had injury problems that he hasn't been able to overcome yet. We frankly don't know if he's a, a good – we don't even know if he's a good pitcher considering how little he's pitched. We've got an indication he's a heck of a prospect for baseball, no doubt about that. But I really believe, to my point here, that Matt Zollers is on another level. This is based on not only what I've seen from him play, but just people I talk to as well who follow this stuff behind the scenes – Plus, obviously, just the, the rankings, quite simply. If you're only checking out Power Mizzou via Rivals.com, their rankings, you might not totally be getting the scope of the hype here. By the way, after, his, his, after the Under Armour camp in Hackensack, New Jersey, by the way, great name for a town, Rivals has revealed they're finally going to put Matt Zollers inside of their top 250. Oh my goodness, it's a miracle, folks. And, and I kid because other services have him much, much higher. Again, Rivals just now putting him inside their overall top 250 at all positions. Well, on three, which has made a really big push in the last couple years to acquire all a lot of recruiting analyst talent. They have him as the 13th overall player in the class. Not quarterback, but player in the entire class. They have him as the second best quarterback overall in the class. 24-7, for example, has him as the sixth best quarterback, ESPN 10th, and again, rivals at 24th is really the outlier here. And to me, with just the athletic upside that Zollers has shown, I just think he very much could be the guy for the future. Since Drew Locke, Mizzou has really been – was searching for years for its quarterback. Obviously, it found one in Brady Cook, and who I think, again, could have an even better season this year. Zollers truly, I think, could be the next guy. We're talking maybe in 2025, it could definitely be a transition year at quarterback – maybe one year of Drew Pine who just transferred as a starter. Who the heck knows? But to me, 
it seems pretty likely that Missouri's looking to turn that over. If they are as good as they think he is, if Zoller's as good as I think he is, pretty exciting to think about turning the reins over to him in 2026 when the north end zone complex is scheduled to be, to be completed. How does that sound, Tiger fans? Let's get that hype going. Get excited. And coming up on the program, I want to talk about what I'm going to be looking for very specifically with Brady Cook this season when it comes to his his ability to be an NFL prospect. If I'm a scout, what do I want to see Brady Cook do this season that makes me think he's a draftable guy in the 2025 draft? And also, where I think the NFL is going wrong, really just the whole QB and football complex is going wrong in terms of developing quarterbacks. But you know what? Before we get there, I want to talk about FanDuel because it's winner-take-all time in the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. And tonight, you can actually bet on the Cardinals and the Royals with exact odds. The Royals, with Seth Lugo on the bump, are minus 130 at home against the Milwaukee Brewers. Cardinals, basically the same situation. Home tilt, Miles Michaelis pitching, minus 130. Do you think the favored Cardinals and Royals can take it down? Heck, you can parlay them together with a nice little two plus 213 payout if you're feeling cocky tonight and you want to watch both games at the same time. But regardless, you got to visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every pitch and playoff shot count. It's FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And you know what, since I brought up baseball betting, they're in the FanDuel read, and, and don't worry, this is going to transition back nicely into our college football talk. I, I have a point here, I promise. But this just reminded me of just how much we've figured out with data over the past decade or so. And I say the past decade because about 10 years ago, well, I was betting on baseball quite a bit and being successful with it because quite frankly I had some edges that are are simple in, in retrospect things like batting average on balls in play fielding fielding independent pitching that kind of stuff just these advanced statistics that would tell you if a pitcher or a hitter was playing above or below his 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 real production that kind of deal what what could you expect in the future more to the point. Well, these days, those type of edges are completely out. Believe you me, FanDuel Sportsbook has figured out all of that stuff. But in spite of the fact that we have so much more video and data, and especially with everyone having a video camera in their pocket, my goodness, the amount of high school football film alone is just night and day today than it was 10, certainly 20 years ago, that type of stuff. But despite all of this new data, all this new information, visually and statistically, all this stuff, it sure seems like one thing has not changed. Basically, recruiting quarterbacks at the college level and indeed drafting them at the NFL level is still a pretty massive crapshoot. And especially at the NFL level, when you've got each one of these 32 franchises is worth billions of dollars, we still can't figure this out. Well, what the heck is going on? Well, I really think that a huge part of the problem is in a lot of ways, especially for these quarterbacks, really the NFL is almost a different sport in some ways than college football. Obviously, I'm being a little dramatic there. It's still first and 10 every time you get the football, right? It's still six points for a touchdown. But when it comes to how players play in the NFL versus college, just watch the Kansas City Chiefs and how they play versus virtually any team you'll see on Saturday afternoons. 
What you'll see is you'll see Patrick Mahomes in the huddle almost every time, calling out a play, calling out the different routes. And then when they break the huddle, well, that was just the beginning of it because now Mahomes has a whole bunch of different things to do. He's identifying the mic. He's changing the routes. He's saying, hey, watch this guy. Watch that guy. Hey, I think it's cover one. Hey, I think it's cover zero. That kind of deal. Well, that's what I want to see for Brady Cook in 2024. Not to the extent, and I mean not to the extreme, that of course Andy Reid and company give Patrick Mahomes a lot of, of freedom and ability to check plays, you know, work the system, all that kind of thing. To me, too often college coaches want you to simply fit into the system and basically be a robot quarterback. I think that's, frankly, I think that was part of Drew Locke's development problem with Josh Heupel in his system. And then what, what happened for, I, I guess, just one year under, under Derek Dooley, but more specifically, especially under Josh Heupel. And I think that's why we've never, one of the reasons we've never seen a Josh Heupel quarterback, to my knowledge, go on and be an NFL player, because what you're asking them to do is just not the same thing that you're asking them to do at the NFL level. The best example I can give to you is Patrick Mahomes has said this. This is an absolute fact. This isn't me just guessing. He said that his first season where Alex Smith was the starter, his rookie season in the NFL of 2017, Mahomes couldn't even identify the Mike linebacker. In other words, he could not identify. He, he wasn't even sure who's the guy in the middle of the defense I need to point out in order to set my blocking for everybody else. Again, he needed, he absolutely needed that one year to sit down and watch, despite the fact that he has an obvious, an otherworldly amount of athletic talent, not only in that right arm, but just athletically too. Then by the time week 17 came along, by God, Patrick Mahomes was pretty doggone good. And then by the next season, he's the MVP. Think about that. In one year, Patrick Mahomes went from not being able to identify a linebacker, the Mike linebacker at the NFL level, one of the most basic things you can possibly do as an NFL quarterback, to being the MVP of the league the next year. So if you don't think that that kind of stuff, the mental part of the game, is not a huge part of the development that can take you to the next level, I think you're wrong. And I think that's an area where not only I want to see Brady Cook take it to the next level, he's the type of guy I think he absolutely can take it to the next level. A smart, hardworking kid. To me, I think obviously there's a risk to putting more on Brady Cook's table, putting, putting more on his plate this season. But I think there's a lot of upside to it too because when you give your quarterback that freedom at the line of scrimmage, if he knows what he's doing, he can get you out of bad plays and turn them into good plays at the last second in a way that the coaches can't because, frankly, the quarterback's right there. He can communicate things much more quickly if he knows what he's doing as opposed to every time looking to the sidelines and going, hey, guys, what am I supposed to do? Help me. What am I supposed to do? Oh, give me the 45 signals and all this stuff. That just, that just simply cannot, in terms of communication, that can't happen as quickly. So you're giving yourself more and better options at the line of scrimmage after the defense has told you what it's going to do a lot of times. That's really important information pre-snap. To me, that's where a really important part of not only where Brady Cook can take his personal game to the next level and be much more interesting to NFL scouts. But more importantly, for us as Mizzou fans, this is where the Missouri offense, one place where it can go even to a higher level from 2023. And coming up on the program, since Mizzou Arena opened, what to do with the Hearn Center has long been a topic of conversation around these parts. And former Missouri Sports Information Director Chad Moeller over at Rock M Nation has his take about what the future of the Hearn Center should be. But I got to say, it's tough for me to agree with Chad on this particular one. So I want to tell you why I disagree with him coming up here in just a little bit. But first, there's a car coming, so game off. We got to pause here to talk more about Monopoly Go. And I know what you're saying. 
Red flag, John. You already talked about that. But you know what? It's my show. I get to do what I want. So in Monopoly Go, you get to team up with your friends for time tournaments where you work together to build up each other's boards. The more you win together, the more prizes you unlock together. And there's so much to get, including stickers, hilarious emojis, new playing pieces to travel your boards with, Plus, Monopoly Go feels new and exciting every day with constantly changing tournaments and challenge. A ton include their own unique big, yeah. A ton include, excuse me, their own unique mini games like digging for treasure or a robot pachinko machine. And there's always new timed events that help you win big, like massive multipliers for everything you win, or even rent frenzies. There all there is always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go. So get off the bench and go download it now free on Google Play or the App Store. Game on. Well, Chad Moeller was actually the sports information director for Mizzou. When I was a columnist at the Missourian, reporter for the Columbia Missourian as well, Now, when I tried to get interview requests, did he ever call me back? No, he did not. Not that I'm bitter or anything like that. John Cadillac. Now, there's a guy who will actually call you back. But here's the thing. Chad Moeller, he was talking about his time with the university, saying that, of course, when it came to the Hearn Center, that's something that the team looked into without a doubt. But according to Chad over at Rock M Nation, quote, the options to either tear or turns down or start over or retrofit it to be more accommodating to the Olympic sports it housed were cost prohibitive. In other words, way too much dang money to renovate Hearn Center or start from scratch. Chad continues, this is me just spouting ideas here, but I would love for Veach, new athletic director Brett Veach, of course, Veach to find a way to tear down Hearns, build a baseball st- wait it's Laird Veach isn't it I did the I did the Brett Veach Laird Veach thing again I think I'm going to do that at least three more times until I get it right no it's Laird Veach the new Missouri athletic director not Brett Veach of course the general manager of the Kansas City Chiefs so let me start that over again but I would love for Laird Veach there we go to find a way to tear down Hearns build a baseball stadium in its place and build an Olympic sport training and competition complex where Simmons Field currently stands, basically switching the two facilities. I feel like baseball could have a much better chance to thrive at this location, and the Olympic sports who currently use Hearns could benefit from better facilities with a brand new with a brand new complex built to their specifications and desires. Easy for me to say is something along those lines those lines would require a metric crap ton, his words, of money to get it done. So to me, that's the whole problem, right? I think in a perfect world, yes, Hearn Center would just be gone and we could build a a, a baseball stadium there. And yes, it'd be no problem whatsoever. Unfortunately, in the world of reality that we're currently residing in, That's just way too much money, especially in a world where Missouri is currently doing a north end zone complex for the football stadium. I think every dollar needs to be directed toward that just to make sure that product gets done in a timely fashion and in in the proper fashion as well. You don't want to cut corners in the most important program in the athletic department by far. Obviously, this is your flagship program. And this is a moment that Missouri is trying to capitalize, not only for the coming seasons, but obviously to set itself up for the coming decades as well. So to me, really, this sounds a lot like what Desiree, what what Chad Moeller suggested here is a lot like what Desiree Reed Francois wanted to do. And I think a big reason why she ended up leaving out the back door at a certain point was, you know what? If our visions aren't aligned here, hey, I want to spend a lot of money. I want baseball to be better. Listen, I'd love for Missouri baseball to be better too. I'm just wondering where is where is the the actual return on investment there? Because 
while the Missouri softball stadium has been really successful, it would seem to me, just in terms of, hey, obviously it's a good place to watch a game. The fans are coming out. At the same time, has it made any money yet? Again, I don't want college b- baseball, b- softball, the sports to be all money driven, but at a certain point, if you're going to spend tens of millions of dollars on new facilities, there's got to be a reason for it. Now, I will say I do like the idea, again, in theory, if this were to happen, I do like the idea of flipping the locations. Frankly, the Simmons Field, one of the windiest spots in all of Columbia, maybe the wind gets knocked down a little bit moving it across the road. I'm not sure. But regardless, certainly the indoor sports would not suffer from that incredibly high point there uh, in Boone County, basically at Stadium in Providence there. So I, I don't mind this. Again, don't mind the idea in theory. In fact, if, if money was no object, great, build a new baseball stadium. Get rid of the Hearn Center. Build a new thing for the other Olympic sports at the old Taylor Stadium site. I, I'm all for it in theory. It's just really hard to imagine. Again, in a world where that seemed to be the main one of the main sources of conflict between Desiree Reed Francois and the rest of the athletic department, it's just really hard for me to see how this is worth it, at least in the near future. Maybe in five to ten years we can revisit this topic again. But considering that even though Hearns is obviously it's not a perfect solution. Where else are you going to put these sports? It is good for volleyball and wrestling and gymnastics to have their own facility because putting them all in Mizzou Arena is not really realistic. The men's and women's basketball teams are always going to have priority. So even though obviously Hearns is a bit of an eyesore, not exactly my favorite area of my my favorite era of architecture in American history, without a doubt. And I know it's inefficient in terms of heating and cooling that monstrosity as well. But again, considering the alternatives, I think just keeping Hearns going for at least another five to 10 years or so is really the only realistic option, at least in this podcaster's opinion. But hey, if you think I'm wrong, would love to hear your opinion. As always, hit me up on X. Facebook, Instagram, LockedOnMizzou.com, or email me, LockedOnMizzou at gmail.com. So until next time, I am John Miller, and thanks as always for listening to Locked on Mizzou.